Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live, you guys. Thank you for staying tuned in. Up next, we have a very, very, very funny comic who was just at the New Faces at Montreal Comedy Festival. Please give it up for Doug Smith. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is great to be here. It is an honor to be here. I, uh, I kind of thought my comedy career was, was over because I sent a very incriminating email to a big comedy club booker recently. And uh, I said, thanks so much for having me. I had a great time. I'd love to do the show again in the future. But thanks to good old autocorrect, I didn't say in. I said, I'd love to do the show again. I'm the future. <laughs> Pretty bold statement, right? <laughs> I don't even think Kanye West has said anything like that. <laughs> so I uh, thought about sending him a follow-up email, of course, you know, being like, in the future, and then I thought, that doesn't make sense, right? Because the, <laughs> the future would never second-guess himself like that. <laughs> you, guys, uh, you guys have been very polite so far, which is great. I did a, I did a show last weekend on a woman in the front row, right where, right where you're sitting right there. Before I even took the microphone out of the stand, she looks up at me and she goes, your mustache. <laughs> I said, what about it? She goes, it's disgusting. <laughs> I was like, really? She's like, yeah, get rid of it. Doesn't fit your face. And then uh, I had to explain to her, of course, that if I was to shave off my mustache, I would look like the 12-year-old that I currently look like I molest. <laughs> I don't think my uh, I don't think my mom prepared me very well for the threat of pedophilia when I was younger. Um, I remember being like five years old and her being like, "Don't talk to strangers. Don't ever talk to strangers. Why not? They're gonna try to lure you in with candy and puppies. I'm listening. And then they're gonna try to touch your private parts. And I just remember thinking, well, if that feels anything as good as a pool jet, I'm in." That is a delightful sensation. <laughs> I think the only thing that could make that better would be the presence of a lollipop and a young Labrador. <laughs> people, uh, people do tell me I look young for my age, but uh, whenever I get my movie tickets, I like to get them online for the senior price. <laughs> Save a couple bucks. I did get caught one time, and the usher was like, sir, these are senior tickets. I was like, yeah, yeah, they are. He's like, well, sir, you're not 65. I was like, <laughs> flattery will get you everywhere, my good man. <laughs> Too kind. You want to see my ID? Where is that wallet? Oh, this Alzheimer's is brutal, man. <laughs> you build this treehouse by yourself? That's a good dog. I, uh... I am getting some gray hairs, which most people start to freak out. I'm psyched, though, because I'm one step closer to my biggest career goal of being cast as the Silver Fox bass player in a Viagra commercial jam band. <laughs> Can't wait. Gonna go off script, bust out a funky solo, pop a pill. Be like, hell of a practice, fellas. I gotta go nail something else in one take. Just walk up stage. <laughs> My, uh, my wife offered to spice things up the other night with some role playing, and uh, I asked her what she had in mind. She's like, well, um, let's see, what if I was your math tutor? Which is funny to me because I am terrible at math. <laughs> the only thing I know is she is 10 times worse at math. <laughs> that wouldn't be much of a tutoring session. <laughs> I'd be like, what's the square root of 36? Beats the shit out of me. <laughs> I think a more realistic role-playing scenario would be I'll be the inquisitive math student whose parents don't realize they're simply paying a prostitute. <laughs> I, uh, 
I got offered uh, I got offered Roadhead recently. You guys ever get any Roadhead? How about you, fella? Visiting? No. Oh, Stone Faced. He does. Not, that's a yes. Uh, I should uh, I should stop ask, asking people that because the last couple I asked that to, the girl looks at him, looks at me. She's like, "He's my brother." And I was like, that doesn't answer the question. <laughs> anyway, I said, no, thank you. She was kind of offended. I was like, listen, I'm a terrible driver. I can't think of a worse time to deploy an airbag. And I don't know how to explain to the cops why a dead woman has my severed penis in her mouth. <laughs> Ended up getting in a huge fight, ended in this being said, sometimes I wish you were a man so I could punch you in the face. <laughs> and that is the meanest thing she has ever said to me. <laughs> She's right though, I'm not, a, I'm not a very manly man. Sometimes I think about taking those natural male enhancement pills. I know they don't enhance your size, but what if they enhance your manliness in other ways? You know, like. What if two weeks in, this is the same, but suddenly you know how to like install shelves and shit? It'd be great. My friends would be like, yeah, those pills working on. I'd be like, well, nothing's changed here, but I'll tell you what has grown, her respect for me. <laughs> um, started taking uh, antidepressants recently, as my doctor thought my anxiety was to blame for my chronic diarrhea. Still have chronic diarrhea, but now I'm pretty okay with it. <laughs> it's quite a drug. <laughs> Saw this billboard the other day. You guys might have seen it around town. It says, is cocaine a problem for you? Want help? And then it shows a guy doing lines with a rolled up $100 bill. <laughs> Not a problem for him, right? <laughs> I think cocaine's a problem if you're doing lines to a straw while your kid stands there crying, holding an undrinkable Capri Sun. You know? That's a little worse. My, uh, my grandfather, uh, I'm sorry, my dad told me a story about how when, his, uh, when he was 10 years old, his mom caught him smoking a cigarette. So as punishment, she made him smoke the entire pack right there in front of her. And from that point on, he was addicted to nicotine. <laughs> So that works. I would never do that to my kid. If I caught him smoking, I'd probably just give him one of those e-cigarettes, you know. <laughs> like, here, go smoke this in public. I don't want you to compromise your health. But I do want everyone to think you're an asshole. <laughs> my grandfather died when I was eight years old. My parents made a huge mistake by telling me the truth, which is that he died in his sleep. So for the next year, <laughs> for the next year, I was awake. They'd be like, Doug, it's bedtime. What's that, dead time? No, thanks. <laughs> sleep when I'm dead. I'm dead if I sleep. <laughs> I'm going to make a pot of coffee, cue up the exorcist. You guys have fun. <laughs> I'm like, all right, we'll see you in the morning. We'll see. Uh, it would have been so much better if they had just lied to me. You know, I would have been such a good kid if I was like, how did Grandpa die? If they're like, well, he was jumping on the bed. <laughs> After lying about brushing his teeth <laughs> and refusing to put his jammies on when he fell and broke his neck on a G.I. Joe he left lying around. <laughs> Doctors say he would have survived if only he had taken one more bite of broccoli. <laughs> being a parent is, uh, being a good parent's tough though, right? That's why I've decided if I have a kid, he's gonna be raised entirely by the nanny. Uh, <laughs> Mainly because I can't think of anything cuter than having a kid with a Jamaican accent. <laughs> wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be cute? You know, come home from work, be like, how come you never play blocks with my dad? <laughs> I'm Doug Smith. Thank you so much. Good night. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City.